going, everyone? How's it going, everyone? Happy Thursday, and welcome to Changing Lives, hosted by me, Deontay Burden. Have an exciting show for you uh, planned today. Uh, we're back in the lab, back in the studio. You know, I took the little one-week hiatus. We had to do a little impromptu. I did it from uh, my home office. Uh, great experience. Had a good time. Uh, not really looking forward to do it anytime <laughs> soon, but I learned a lot and everything. And I, um, I think... You know, with last week's show in, in terms of talking about mentally tough people and to be one of the people that I think I kind of pride myself on saying I'm uh, mentally tough. That was a good improvisation in terms of when things went left. We had to make an adjustment in everything. Hey, look, we'll do it from here. That's right. And everything. So lab, you know, uh, uh, I appreciate it and everything. Cause one thing we were just kind of discussing, we we're going to do it or not. Hey, man, look, we're going to go on and make it happen. So That's I'm right. glad I did it and everything. That's right. So that's another tool in the toolbox, but well, we ain't going to try to use that wrench no time soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, we shout out my man DJ Lab. We here. What's going and on? And everything. Yeah, my man. So we 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 here and everything. You know, to give another big shout out to Joan and my assistant. She's uh, still on high, her hiatus. You know, let know I thought her, I thought some prayers with her. One, well, always, 100%. Yeah, yeah big, send a big shout out to Joni. But, um. As we normally start off with everything, we're gonna talk about my previous week, you know, with our introduction, and um, last week's show. I think went, you know, I think went pretty good and everything. I'm real proud of myself. You did a good job. Yeah, I, I appreciate. It. You I did appreciate a good it. job. I appreciate it and everything. I uh, I know the Instagram was tilted <laughs> and everything. <laughs> so I found that out later and everything. But again, you know, you live and learn. You won't know until you, until you give it a try. I actually hit it one time, stopped it, uh-huh. had to start it back over in the middle of the show and everything. But again, man, you know now you know. Right now you know. And, and, and People everything. don't realize so. that when you tilt it on Instagram, it don't tilt. When you um, tilt your phone camera, uh-huh. Instagram don't tilt. Only Facebook tilts. Yeah, I yeah. know that now. <laughs> <laughs> but it was cool. It was cool. It was cool. Good experience, and it, it taped like going that way. But that ain't how I was doing, man. Right. So it was a, it was cool experience and everything. Um, we on the last two weeks of tax season, I am the owner of Majestic Business Services. Um, we're a full scale business service firm. We're in the last two weeks of tax season. Tax season has been going phenomenal. Uh, again, I appreciate everybody that's been supporting our business and everything. Um, and also, I just want to give an uh, extended welcome to anyone that has not done their taxes yet or anything. Please come see us. We'll take care of you. There's no job too big, definitely nothing too small. Whatever you have, we'll take care of you. And again, I am the expert and keep you from getting audited and everything. Because <laughs> that's very important. Yeah, absolutely. Because again, uh, I know at you know beginning of the year, you see many people, so many people on the internet uh, promoting their tax business. I can get you this, I can get you that. Hey, you see what H and R Block and all them doing it. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, you know, you get that letter from the IRS. You know, four or five months from now, and you call them back, you can't get nobody on the damn phone. Mm-hmm. You go by the office is empty and everything. Now you just man, the tax man I had last year, we're doing it. Well, you know, when you went in there, you seen that they was. You know, you had that feeling <laughs> with some of the Jimmy oh, rigging your stuff. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, you know, um, come see us so we don't have to, you know, you know, do open heart surgery on some stuff. Somebody else book it up for you <laughs> already and everything. But, yeah, uh, I'll also be giving some of the, the company information out, you know, as we go on through the show. Um, this past weekend, I graduated from C.L. Harper, class 95, but class of 94 had a little get-together. Oh, okay. I had a real good good time. So, shout-out to uh, C.L. Harper, class of 94. They had a little thing this weekend was that main event. It was cool to see everybody I hadn't seen in a minute and everything. So I had a good time with doing that. That was Saturday night. Um, we lost to Nipsey Hussle on a Sunday. You know, you hate to see anybody leave. But it's just amazing all the conspiracy theories I've right. seen. Oh, right. man. Right. <laughs> everybody was talking about, you know, the the, the CIA and Dr. CB and all this other kind of stuff. You'd be like, whoa. Right. People ain't never – did any kind of research on Dr. Seabe? Hell, even a damn Nissa Hustle. I ain't even read a damn uh, a paragraph. <laughs> All these he, conspiracies. He, now, he was doing a documentary on Dr. Seabe. No, I know he was doing okay. the, doc, the, the, the documentary, but people saying he got killed on that. And I'm just thinking to myself that um, you can Google Dr. Seabe. Uh-huh. And if you if you just being diligent and find the same information out, he probably can get, get a little bit more information in depth. Right. But. You have a lot of information that's readily accessible to you. We talked but, about that. Yeah, but just to say, hey, this, that, and that, and everything, and um, you hate to see somebody pass. And I guess all the, the I seen the video, and and you know, you, you know, more and more information is coming out and stuff like that. But it's just how everybody went into the government, did this, that, and that, and everything. You're like, oh. 
okay, man. You got a lot of brothers out here doing stuff in the community and everything. And do the government or uh, some of the powers to be have problem with it? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But also, you got some new damn haters in your neighborhood. That's it don't true. mean no damn good because you're talking about getting some of the dope out of the neighborhood, getting some of the crime out of the neighborhood that they live and profit off of. And you're looking at taking, it. yeah, exactly. They don't want to leave. Right. And a lot of time people are sitting there just saying that the government did. A lot of time, you know, I'm a, you know, I'm firm believing it and I take a lot of heat. Shit, we don't do another, another, a good enough job policing ourselves. Right. So a lot of time you see these folks as pushing the dope and doing all this kind of stuff in your neighborhood and you say, I don't want to snitch on do this, that, and that, but they the one that drag your neighborhood into a hole. Mm-hmm. And uh, again, uh, I hate, you know, the br- uh, brother lost his life, especially 33. He ain't seen no damn life. 33. I ain't seen no damn life, but... um. Again, that was just so amazing to see the floods of all the kind of stuff with CIA, you know, and everything. God knows we went through a lot, you know, as a community over the years with the government and right, eventually. FBI and all that. But now nah, I think that was just some straight Negro on Negro stuff yeah. and everything like that. And however it was handled, you know, it was absolutely handled the wrong way because nobody's life worth any kind of argument. That's yeah, true. But, um, you know, that was one thing we encountered. And uh, lastly, I uh, just want to remind everybody that starting next month, we've got the courses coming out. Some of the one-on-one courses for you guys want to start your own business. Some of the uh, uh, credit courses and everything. I'll be having that stuff wheeling out next month. One thing I do want to uh, offer to everybody, and I'll bring it up again later on in the show. What I've noticed a lot in terms of people getting these smaller refunds this year, uh, people are asking Deontay, what do I need to do next year so I won't be in the same rep while so I maybe get a bigger refund or I don't have to owe at all. Okay. Uh, what I want to offer is that, you know, book if you go to our, uh, the link that we have in terms of the consulting, book an appointment, book a consulting appointment. It's not a tax preparation co- uh, appointment, but book a consulting appointment. We charge uh, $50 for 30 minutes, $75 an hour. Pick the $30, the $30 link, and what we'll do is we'll draft up everything in terms of what you make and what withholding you need to have, and you know, we'll you know find out what number you're comfortable with with taking home on your take home pay, and make sure that you're paying the optimal amount in taxes this year. So again, um, hit the consulting link. You can go to majesticbiz.com. That's www.majesticbiz.com. Um, you'll see the scheduling app. Book a consulting appointment, and we'll go through and do that analysis for you to let you know how you need to change and adjust your W four. So you're not in a situation where you may be on the IRS uh, next year, you know, find mm-hmm. that number that, you know, you're comfortable with that take home pay. We may have uh, uh, lower or increase those, uh, your, your W-4 and make sure that you're not in a situation next year like how in the world this happened right. or screw Trump. So, you, you know, again, I'm, I'm trying to help empower everybody with this information, let you know what you should do. Once you know, hey, look, Deontay's offering this um, this, this to get done. Let me go on and do it. Don't go into next year. Oh man, Trump did this. It's been offered to you. Right. We can fix it now. Mm-hmm. All right. So you know, we take care now. Take care later. We, you know, regardless, gonna get taken care of. Okay. So balls in your court, everyone. But again, we'll bring that up later on the show. Um, tonight we'll be talking about why you uh why you won't get your turn, mm. and this is a. Uh, a subject that's real near and dear to me in terms of why people don't get their turn because a lot of times you know I, I sit back and think about what well, people are talking about how things in life ain't going their way mm-hmm. or things didn't go their way and they you know bring up all the the different kinds of excuses you know politics and white folks and <laughs> haters you know all kind of things you know for our circumstances and they're not really thinking about it in terms of what they could have did right you know um I had put like a little video out uh, last week, kind of like a promo for the show, talking about, you know, in, in everyone's life, uh, you probably have four or five instances that kind of like, in, you know, that where you have to make those decisions. Those decisions are very uncomfortable and they're also very frightening. Mm-hmm. Some more or less to the, either one. Those decisions may be, you know, if you're going to divorce somebody, you're going to marry somebody, you're going to take this job, you're going to move, you're going to go back to school gonna quit your job they're very uncomfortable scary decisions but those are game changers right and what we and, and in life like so you only get four or five of those opportunities if you don't take advantage of those opportunities um you just may never get them back right and it doesn't mean you need to take them but you have to be able to live with yourself if you don't mm-hmm. you know and that's where i wanted to talk about tonight in tonight's show and you know kind of like i was just thinking about things in um my life personally uh, two things real quick. I just remember kind of like when I, you know, being younger in high school and stuff, you make some decisions 
probably ninth grade. Mm-hmm. You know, you may get to a D, couple of D's on your transcripts and everything. And my class was actually the first class that two things happened uh, in 95 where we had the graduation exam and also our class, you know, you had to take that to graduate for the Georgia High School graduation exam, but also the HOPE. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. so we was that initial class with offering the HOPE scholarship. And uh, what was it 3 5 or uh, 3.0? It was 3 5. Okay. Regardless, I didn't have the shit. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and you're talking to a person that, you know, I was in the gifted program challenge since like sixth grade. Okay. All through elementary, all through high school, you know, you, you you know, geometry, calculus. I mean, everything, you know, AP, everything. But I always get C's, do enough, and it's just really just lazy. Okay. I always smart. And what bit me in the butt was, because I didn't, I wasn't doing that, I was making no decisions, my senior year came about, and there, all my classmates were getting the hope. Mm. And that's why I brought, you know, the story a couple, uh, a couple shows back when I realized my mom had no money and I brought up, Hey mama, ready to go to college. And she was like, part-time job. She's trying to do this. And I might right. can go next year. I'm like, Oh shit, let me call this recruiter. <laughs> but really and truly because of the decisions I made affected that. And that's one of the things where if I probably, when I was younger, and I didn't know mm-hmm. the gravity of what I was doing, probably made probably better decisions. I could have been in a better spot. That's yeah, Yeah. We all make pretty bad. You no, know, when we're younger, we don't think about the decisions. We, that's not how it's going to affect us when we get older. Absolutely. So we just do stuff. Luckily for me, <laughs> I went to summer school because I was trying, like we had to start, I told you the story for to um, get breakfast and lunch. Uh-huh. Summer school was 8 to 4 in Chicago, and it was free. Uh-huh. I went to summer school from 8 to 4, and I needed lunch at 12, and I'd eat the breakfast at 8. So in between 8 and 12, I went to class. Yeah. So luckily for me, I went to class enough all through – uh, elementary school all through high school that by the time my senior year come I didn't ha- I had too many credits there you go so my senior year came I had tons of credits and I had one class I had Afri- African American history studies class my first class and the rest of the, the day was study hall because mm-hmm. I didn't I didn't need any more credits Absolutely. so I was able enough to lucky enough well I won't say lucky because I was trying to f- figure out how to eat but smart enough to know go ahead I'm here I might well go to class and I went to class. And it was just summer school. I didn't think about the credits back then. Uh-huh. I was just, I'm here. Ain't nobody going to be outside at 12 o'clock, at 1 o'clock anyway in Chicago because it's freaking hot and nobody really had air conditioning. Yeah. So I just went to class, hung out in the school. And then my senior year, I was 15, graduated high school. You, you know, so you, you see how unconsciously you made that decision, yeah. how that benefited it you. Went, I wasn't even thinking about it. it. Exactly. And, and, and that was the kind of thing we we're talking about when we miss our turns. My dumb ass doing the opposite, <laughs> still not understanding the magnitude, good or bad for me, how that affected me. Um, the second thing is, I remember when I graduated, uh, uh, got my undergrad from Georgia State. Mm-hmm. And uh, pivotal point, because I was just like, okay, should I go to grad school or should I just kind of work on my business? Um, and at that point, I decided, let me go and work on my business. Mm-hmm. The issue, I didn't go back to grad school to hell almost 13, 14 years later. Mm. Well, I didn't have the brain, energy, all that kind of stuff and everything. And it works out. But my whole point was uh, sometimes if I had made that decision where I could have been. Now, again, grad school was a lot easier for me because I had been a business owner over 10 years. So I had a lot of more um, uh, uh, real world real practical world experience. experience. Yeah, whereas, yeah. you know, school is still more theoretical, mm-hmm. you know, and everything. But so I was able in you know, grad school pretty easy mm-hmm. for me because I graduated cum laude from uh, uh, undergrad and in grad school, mm-hmm. so I, I was able to, to to knock that out. But sometimes you wonder, like, what if I had to did that? Yeah, that's what I want to talk about in terms of some of the decisions we make consciously and you know, you know, unconsciously in terms of what we do and how that affects us. Well, we always sometimes want to blame other people and blame other things. We're like, shit, it's just we we did it. Hey, mom, my mom's on uh, Instagram. <laughs> Tell me she loves hey, you. Hey, mom, <laughs> love you too, mom. I hope you're enjoying the show. But that was um. One of the things I wanted to bring about. So what we're going to talk about tonight is reasons why, you know, I'm going to give five reasons why people miss out on opportunities and also give you a couple ways how to avoid missing your turn uh, and everything. So uh, uh, make sure, you know, again, this is uh, Change the Live hosted by me, Deontay Burton. Please like, share, subscribe to the channel. Just want to bring it up. You know, we always at 900 subscribers. Uh-oh. So listen. 
like, share, subscribe to the channel. Please subscribe to and tell all your family and friends about us. You know, if you if you if you know, I know I get a lot of good feedback. Some feedback, you know, criticism is great. I you know I take it how it comes, but please tell people to go to the channel, subscribe to it, uh, and everything. So you know, I'm I'm very proud about what we're doing as far as with the show, what we're doing as a group, as you know, Misfits Media Group, all together with everybody else shows and stuff like that. We're doing a, a lot of hard work, and, we, and you can tell that a lot of passion is behind everybody's show. Everybody's growing and stuff. So please make sure you tell everybody to subscribe to the the YouTube channel, subscribe to Misfit Media Group, look at all the other shows on here, and push, 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 it, you know, everything we're doing all the time if you can. Um, with going to the first thing we want to talk about, a reason why people miss their term or reason why people miss those opportunities. The first thing I want to talk about is is wasting time. Wasting time, one of the first reasons. When I say about wasting time is that when you're doing things that's not going to be you know, going to your ultimate goal. You know, you sometimes we put off things uh, for tomorrow that we can do today. And that a lot of times come back and bite us in the butt because we think we got so much time, you know, on our hands and we're not able to do that. Um, if you think about it, hell, Facebook and Instagram eat out so much of your damn day. It eats up your day. Man, you'll sit there and try to check on this and check on that. You're like, shit, man, I was on here damn 30, 40 minutes. That's true. You know, and, you so and, and you do that three or four times a day, you don't waste two or three hours. Mm -hmm. And here you are, lost two or three hours of, of your day just driving back and forth to work. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just those kind of things, wasting your time, you know, will, will come back and bite you in the butt all the time. I remember a story I heard about the uh, the U.S. hockey team, the 1980 U.S. Uh, gold hockey team, they won a gold medal in, uh, uh, in the 1980 Olympics. And when they first got the, the team together, uh, that's, that's the team that beat, uh, they had the super upset that people still talk about that where they beat Russia for the gold medal. Okay, okay. But when they got the team together, and one of the first things that they sat down and said, you know, before they did it in the gold setting, they said, listen, our goal is to win the gold medal. And to go to the point where we were talking about it, that they said, listen, anything that you may be doing as an individual that does not go to that common goal, let it go. You know, anything else, if you want to go party, you want to go drink, you want to go do this, that. If it's not going to the goal of us getting that gold medal, don't do it. we don't need to do it. Mm. So there was no procrastination. There was no wasted time, no wasted movements. Everything was going to that goal of winning the gold medal at the 1980 Olympics. So that's one of the things, you know, we talk about wasting time. Uh, so many times people do that and don't really realize you know when you're doing that hey you you miss that little swing you know, that, that opportunity at the plate yeah and everything um the second thing is mixing with the wrong people you know uh, what i mean by mixing with the wrong people sometimes you know people can have some thoughts in their minds that are so damn negative they can just take out all your positive thoughts uh you know they'll say certain things to you you know and again it's, it's nothing intentional uh that people try to make you not do it just that when they speak their fears out loud it just scare the hell out of you mm -hmm. and one thing people have to understand um people that are close to you family friends they're not obligated to see your dream because yeah. what you see in your eyes or what you're trying to accomplish and where you're trying to be that's for you to see right they don't you, see that yeah and you can do a good job of actually talking to them and sharing it with them but they're not obligated to catch that vision and sometimes people get frustrated, like, man, what the hell y'all understand? And now, nah, man, you know, they listen to you, mm -hmm. you know. And we we talking about the public not even being negative or saying anything, but they're not obligated to see that. And people have to understand that, you know, everybody's not going to to to, to give you a raw a raw raw or be a cheerleader and push you in a certain way. So you have to make sure that you're very careful, especially when you share your dreams with your goals mm -hmm. with and something like that, because sometimes people can. You know, we talked about it before. They they have those fears, excuse me, inhibitions that they'll put on you, and you just have everything together. And they say something, you just shit. Yeah, you're right, man. And you shut it down. Yeah, you shut it down. You yeah. damn fool. No, you have to keep hold of, uh, uh, of what you feel and what you believe in. And you know, those people that can actually do things to kind of throw those things off. You gotta be careful not to be mixing with them. That yeah. don't mean leave your friends and family alone. Just don't share that shit with them. <laughs> you know, <laughs> point blank period. You know, and everything. So uh, that was the uh, mixing with uh, the wrong people 
it's another thing to kind of throw you off where you can you know miss opportunities and miss your turn no, no problem the third thing is not focusing um i know everybody heard the whole the old saying uh jack of all trades master of none <laughs> <laughs> and um i've been a victim of this and a victim but i've been you know guilty of, of, of doing that i'm real guilty yeah um the thing of it is uh we sometimes be thinking so much about doing certain things we miss out on uh on some things that you're doing right in front of us because we're like, I want to, you know, start this detail business. I want to, you know, you know, you know, start the landscaping. You know, you know, me and my brother just talking about getting this commercial cleaning company. Hey, man, you know, you got a car. Hey, let's go and get this car wash set up. We all over the damn place. Whereas, look, you know, you just talked to this brother the other day. You know, they got this moving company set up. You know, everything's right there to structure together. You're looking at starting your business, but you're all over the place with the other stuff. This guy has experience and all this stuff right there in front of you. But you all over the place trying to just think about, you know, what you could be doing and everything. But you got the opportunity in front of you and you miss it. Okay. Because you ain't got, you know, you, you right over here in the stars. There's nothing wrong with, you know, just kind of vision, visualizing yourself doing certain things. But, you know, it's the difference between visualizing and, and dreaming mm-hmm. and stargazing. Right. You know, and everything. So sometimes you just have to come from here down and look straight ahead and see the opportunities in front of you. Right. You know, and everything. Right. So that's one that that's a lot of times a lot of people are very guilty of that because especially in the city of like of Atlanta, because, you know, you have there are some places in this country, I think, especially up north where, you know, um, um, you you may need money. You actually do need money mm-hmm. to, to to get certain things started and everything because it's, it's so much more expensive. Yeah. But I think uh, that's everywhere. Like like. You need money to get started just by way. It's just you need more money in some places than you do others. Uh-huh. Um, a lot of people can start stuff with a dream and a, a, a idea and a dream. You know that 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 can happen. But if you want to do it right, I think that you do need money. It's just that up north may cost you three times as much as down here will cost you. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. it may not seem like it's a lot, uh, no money, but it's still costing you. Yeah. Even even with the barriers of entry, I'm talking about you can just easily more probably put a, a thought into motion mm-hmm. and everything and, and, and it's easier i think here to just even think about the possibility to do mm-hmm. it but with that said you lose so much damn focus because you're trying to just conquer the damn world we just need to just look just walk in a straight path and everything mm-hmm. so that's another thing that caused people you know to miss those opportunities or uh, uh, you know miss those turns mm-hmm. it's just not focusing you know what's in front of them um Another thing is, uh, you know, I think this is major. I and mean, we talked about this in the previous show, just not taking risks. Yeah. You know, um, you know, the show we talked about taking risks and taking chances. I think that was a, uh, and, and I'm bringing up some of these shows because you can always go on the YouTube channel and look back at some of these past shows we talk about where we discussed the difference between taking a risk and taking a chance. And when we talk about taking a risk, a risk is a calculated move. You've done research to kind of look at contingent plans. If this happened, that don't happen. Gather yourself with information. You, you don't. You're not going to be 100 percent sure that it's going to happen, mm-hmm. but you've done enough homework on it to be able to make that decision. Whereas a chance, you just take a, a blind move. And a lot of times, even when people have equipped themselves with information uh, before they try to make a decision or take a risk, they just don't want to do it. That's true. Scared as hell. But you got to be realistic in life. You can't do the same shit and expect the same results. That's true. That's just that's just point blank period. Yeah, I and, try uh, something different all the time. Yeah, and uh, uh, people don't realize, you know, opportunities don't come that often. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times you have to do something different to kind of get those opportunities to happen for you. So when you're not willing to take risk or do something different, you got to be, you know, realistic about what's gonna happen. And do you, let me ask you a question. Sure. Do you think not being focused can also make you miss your opportunity? Like you're not focused on this one thing you should be this path you walking on so when the opportunity walk across that path you looking over here at this you looking over here at this and you don't even see that opportunity it, it's uh absolutely uh you you see what you seek mm-hmm. so if you actually looking for you know and being realistic you ain't stargazing we ain't daydreaming mm-hmm. you being realistic about you know this is where i'm trying to be and everything you in in terms of what you're trying to do where you're trying to be and really what you can do you know, um, I was just having a conversation with a uh, with, with a friend of mine. You know, just from different organizational stuff. In terms of sometimes people 
they want to do certain things, but they don't have the competency okay. to okay. to to do it. They're not you know? confident enough. Yeah, and they don't research it to understand it. Yeah, I have this count. You know, I tell a lot of times people it's cool to want to be an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. be a businessman. You know, it sounds good and everything like that. But a lot of times people don't really realize that you know there's so much other shit that comes along with it. It's more than just saying I'm the boss. And there are some people that are excellent at what they do, but they're not going to be good as far as being the the actual owner. Yeah. You know, some people can be excellent managers, but having the vision to run an organization, that's a whole different damn monster. Mm -hmm. So you can make sure that people come in and out, check in and out, make sure, you know, this is what we got to do today that gets done and kind of push this, that, and that. But when you're the owner, you're you're not messing with that. Right. You're right. making sure that we're looking at, you know, one month, uh, or six months, a year ahead. You know, this is the goal we have, and this is the plan we have to put in. This is my vision, what we need to be. Mm-hmm. And what if my, in order for me to get my vision, you you uh, present that to your managers for them to make plans to, to implement, implement everything. Yeah. Two whole different dynamics. People don't realize that you got to, I mean, when you're the owner, you got to think about 5, 10, 15 years, but you also got to think about, you got to research competition, see what they're doing. And if they're doing it better, you got to figure out a way to do it better. You get what I'm saying? There, there's a lot of con- there's a lot of contingencies to owning a business, being the boss. It's not just I'm the boss and walking in and making a ton of money. Because there's always somebody. Who, I don't know if that was you who told me that um, there's really not a lot of whole new ideas. Mm-hmm. There's just ideas that everybody's tried and you just try to figure out how to do it better. That's it. <laughs> See, don't, don't me say that, you know, because the thing of it is, and, and in life, you know, you know, there's not nothing, you know, you can come over like, man, this is not original damn idea. Right. The issue comes up, can you have an implemental plan to bring it to fruition? Okay. Most folks can't do that. Mm. Yeah, man, y'all could, we ought to do this, we ought to do that. But like, okay, cool, how are we going to do it? And that's why I'm very conscious about, if I give you a suggestion, I'm going to give you a blueprint on how my suggestion can work. Right. Now, it may not work, but I'm going to give you a blueprint instead of just getting this blind-ass suggestion. Hey, y'all ought to do this. Y'all to do that and everything. I'm like, man, that shit ain't possible and everything. But in life, you know, I, uh, you're never going to be at any shortage of getting people's opinions and suggestions. That's true. Now, getting some damn help and plans and stuff that's like that. That's where it comes. That's what shit. Yeah. That where the problem comes in. Man, <laughs> people don't know a damn thing. They got all kind of ideas of what you can do. Right. But no, nowhere how to bring it, you know, upon happening. So that was, um, you, you, you know, again, getting back to what we were talking about in terms of taking those risks, being able to take risks and not being scared uh, uh, of what can happen. Again, because like we said, risk, we've done information about it. Mm-hmm. But you got to step off that ledge. That's true. You got to open that door. You know, until you do that, you know, same thing, you're going to get the same results, point blank, period. Um, lastly, the other thing that I think, you know, I think it's a major thing that's kind of go, going with risk um, that holds back a lot of people. Um, and you know, in, in life, and it's probably the most major thing as far as why people, you know, miss those opportunities. Fear. Mm. Uh, that's the most. That's probably the biggest in- inhibitor that people, you know, encounter in life. You know, and you know, when you make fear that you know uh, that much in charge of your life, mm-hmm. you're always going to be kind of handcuffed on what you can do. Mm-hmm. You'll never realize your potential. You'll never even seek to even opportunities, even the stuff we talked, all the other things we talked about, fear can just be so crippling. And so when you don't, when, when you look at those things that you want to do in, in, in life, and if you can't visually just, hey, I can I can do it, I ain't worried about it, and everything, you take the initiative to kind of make those things happen, fear fear step step on it every time. Yeah, and, that, and this goes back to something you said a little bit earlier, wrong people. Wrong people can, you can have all the confidence in the world, but hanging out with the wrong people can make you fearful of what you're trying to do, like mm-hmm. you just said. So that, that that fear can be drawn upon you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And people, this is what everybody got to realize, too. Fear is a natural human, you know, emotion. Mm-hmm. You know, some people, and this is the thing about it, I think it's kind of crazy. I'm like, I ain't scared of that. Shit, everybody's scared of something. Mm-hmm. Now, what it is is that everybody's tolerance and everybody's uh, reaction to fear is totally different. Right. Some folks, you know, you know, encounter fear, and it's like, okay, it's more of an awareness mechanism. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, damn, I can drown, so let me just not go out here without my uh, life jacket. <laughs> no, life jacket. <laughs> yeah, there you go. 
And if some people see water, like, oh, no, yeah, I ain't right. going that damn pool, you know, and they, <laughs> and, they, and, they, and, they, and they can swim. <laughs> and, 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 and. So it's just that uh, you you determine how much you'll let fear, you know, come. Because it's, it's, it's a normal human emotion. Right. It's just that we, we're the ones that uh, truly dictate how much we'll let fear, you know, uh, uh, be a factor of our lives. Okay. You know, so, okay. again, those are the uh, reason why people miss opportunity to turn, those five reasons being – Number one, wasting time. Number two, uh, mixing with the wrong people. Number three, not focusing. Number four, not taking risks. And five, fear. Okay? Um, and again, all, all the information we go over in the show, we give it like a little uh, summary and outline, you know, on the uh, YouTube channel. So we post that and everything so you'll be able to see some of the same information again. Uh, now, uh, well, before we go into that, again, this is the uh, Change of Life hosted by me, Deontay Burden. Please go to the YouTube, uh, YouTube channel, like, share, and subscribe to it. Um, uh, subscribers have been growing, getting a lot of feedback. A lot of people hit me up and talking about the show. They like it and stuff like that. So if you really, really like it, do me one huge favor. Share it to your friends about it and give me some more subscribers and stuff. Right. Because um, if you like what we've done so far, you have no idea what we got coming for you in the future. Because right. I love doing this and everything. So just give you a little tidbit. I'm always planning for the shows, you know, way in advance and stuff like that, how we can make it better. I'm dealing with some great people here, uh, Misfits Media Group, in terms of, you know, just how what we're doing with the station. You, you And I know you've seen the progression with not just my show, everybody else's show. We put out a lot of good information. So mm-hmm. please make sure you go to, you know, uh, to the YouTube channel, subscribe to it, and also check out everybody else on the, uh, on the station as well. Now, we went through all that dreary stuff and everybody doing this self-reflecting like yeah that's me that's yeah, me that's yeah. <laughs> damn that's shit. Going, he talking yeah, about my right. ass yeah <laughs> so now what i'm gonna do you know me i always bring that kind of stuff up those problems but what do i always do i'm gonna give you solutions so all what right. we're gonna talk about now is ways to avoid missing those opportunities so you don't miss your turn okay again our subject tonight is why people miss their turn so now we're gonna talk about ways that you can uh, things you can do so you don't miss that turn and the first damn thing, probably the most simple thing you can do in life, and that's open your damn mouth. Mm. Okay? What well, they're saying, oh, closed mouth don't get fed. That's right. And uh, a lot of times people, they get passed over just because they don't say shit. And, you know, you see a lot of times, you know, uh, I remember, <laughs> I remember it was a little girl, I was probably ninth or 10th grade. I liked her. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I was just so for one i don't know and i ain't never been no damn intimidated person but i was intimidated from just saying something <laughs> to her right and uh and i might have shared this with you and then maybe like a week or two later i seen her walking down the hallway with mcgilla gorilla <laughs> shit. You about how the hell his ugly ass gorilla? so you know i had to put my hater bone in shit i'm mad <laughs> you know hell i'm i don't say f it hell i know his ugly ass can get her hell right. i can go and approach her right it don't take that much he he talked to her and i was like yeah you know this thing i see you know going with such and such you know what's up with that i'm hating like hell <laughs> give a damn you know she told me the most simplest shit he asked uh, what the f- what <laughs> that's all it took and that like any other bad moment i had in my life the last damn time that was the issue with me not damn asking <laughs> <laughs> But again, though that, that thing open your mouth and just you know you see people a lot of time folks jump in front of them in line they don't say nothing they kind of hesitant you know even though you know, somebody took your turn or got in front of you or it was your opportunity you been there you don't say nothing because now nah, I want to start and I want to hear that shit no nah, you been a lot of hours how the hell are you gonna walk up and get in front of you those kind of things because you don't stand up for yourself or you don't open your mouth that's why you get passed up in life the world is mean the world is cruel and the world is what it is you know it, life ain't fair. And everybody ain't going to be right to treat you. So if you don't open your mouth for you, who the hell going to say something for you? So that's the thing about it. You know, number one, just open your damn mouth. You know, that's the, so, so you don't miss those opportunities. When you know somebody intense, sometimes people intentionally just, you know, know it's your turn. And they just skip over your ass. And so until you open your damn mouth, that's going to constantly happen to you, everyone. So number one, open your mouth. The next thing is to take ownership. When you see the, you know, sometimes people say call it. We're going to claim it and everything. Right. That's the thing about it. So you sit there and you know that show of shit, I'm going to do it. Now, that don't mean leave that damn words. Going to put the action behind it. Right. Take ownership. This is your opportunity. This is what was meant for you. Going to do it. Take over. You know this is the damn uh, job you've been thinking about doing. 
man, you go in that damn interview site. This my damn shit. Right. Not going there with, you know, I'm a hard worker. I do this, that, that. <laughs> nah, look, I'm going to make this company this amount of money. I'm going to do this, this, that. This is what I bring to the table. This is what I've done in the past. You know yourself inside out. You selling yourself. Mm-hmm. You claiming it. You owning it. That's you it. know? You know, somebody come to me, they want to get their stuff, their taxes done and stuff like that. They can go to anybody here the same kind of shit. I'm going to keep you from getting out of it. You know, this is my track record. Yeah, this is what, yeah, exactly. This is what I bring to the table. This is the companies we're doing. This is what we're doing with. This is my track record. You're not getting, you know, I can do this, I can do that. Everybody can do this, but everybody ain't going to be able to sit here and get good results. We cannot argue results. We can argue opinions, how people feel. We cannot argue numbers. We can't argue results. That's true. So you got to, you got to take ownership. You got to take ownership, you know, uh, you know, cause even when it ain't technically yours, if you want it, you got to get out there and do it. That's true. You will not, you know, you know, the world passed the person by just sitting there looking, waiting for that turn. This shit ain't going to happen. It ain't going to damn happen. That's so true. You know, that's so, so true. A lot of people sit back and they, and they put it in. And see what you said, something that I love. They put it in and they claim it. And then they wait back for, and see what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. They claim, it, oh, that's mine. And then they sit back. Waiting for it to come to him. You know, claim it. Yeah. Pray on it. Pray on it. <laughs> Leave it in God's put it, hands. Put it in the atmosphere. Oh, man. <laughs> shit. <laughs> and then sit back. Yeah, man, you and then wonder what happened to say, man. God ain't asking none of my prayer because you ain't did nothing. <laughs> Black folks won't support my business. Yeah. Nah, shit, you better go out there and make it happen. <laughs> no, nah, no, <nah>, no. <nah. laughs> Unless you're a damn magician. <laughs> yeah. But even he got to put a rabbit out of the hat. How, how many flies and business cards have you passed? Man. Do you even have business cards? That's a good question. When we started this first show off with that. Oh, shit, man. <laughs> like I said, you better, you, you better claim it, and you better claim it like no other. And, it ain't, and claiming it is not words, just words. That's that's very important. It's not just words. That's true. The third thing, and this is very, very crucial, you got to believe in yourself and nobody else believes in you. And that's very hard because a lot of times, you know, People want them pats on the back and what they call support. Man, like I said before, people ain't obligated to see your vision. Mm-hmm. If you want it, you want it. You know, and and you you a damn fool if you're going to sit here and be kind of holding back because I didn't get this and I didn't get that. I had a real good talk with my uncle. My uncle's a very successful businessman, and, and me and him were sitting there rapping, and he was just telling me how he went years because he wasn't getting the family support, not the people being negative, but they just weren't really giving the moral support. You want it, you just get to the point like, you know, F it. Right. I got to do it. And, again, sometimes that kind of uh, uh, moment, you know, come to people sooner than than, than others. But you got to sit here and believe in yourself. Nobody thinks that you can do it and all that. It, it's not about them seeing it. When you're so damn confident that you can do something, that shit emits the energy to other people. But people just like, damn. How Think about this, everybody. Right now, this well, we all got a problem with President Trump. Mm-hmm. But just think about it. You can say, okay, hey, it was, you know, he did some shady stuff, whatever, to be president. But to go from no political experience, none. And you got career, you got people that have been in Congress 20, 30 years. They went through the ranks of local government, state government, federal. They've been federal judges and attorneys, made a career of it, and now they're ready to run for president. This man been a business man. Say shit, I'm gonna run for president. Mm-hmm. Man, who the hell? Come on, do you know how much confidence you gotta have in yourself and vision to make that happen? Mm-hmm. And a lot of times people sitting there, they just worried about them. You know, man, I don't even wanna go to them damn folks and ask for that raise. I don't wanna get that damn promotion. Mm-hmm. I can't do this. You gotta believe it first. And if you don't believe it, it ain't gonna damn ain't happen. happen. It ain't get so get your scary ass together yeah. and, 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 and and believe in yourself. That's that is so important. To believe in yourself is so important to do it because until you made that decision to believe you can do it, it probably ain't gonna happen. And the, and the biggest thing is you gotta motivate yourself. Mm-hmm. You can't wait on other people to how to help you motivate you to do what you're trying to do. Mm. You gotta motivate yourself. You gotta say to yourself, "I'm the best person at this." Mm. And I say that to my, I, you know, like we talk all the time. But every once I get out of my funk, I say, "Man, I'm the best person doing this." Absolutely. I, 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 this is gonna be the best. Radio station in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Of course, it's only been a it's only it ain't been a year yet, but mm-hmm. I feel like I'm on the right path. You know, we feel like we on the right path. I know we are. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I see it. I already see what it what it can be. And all I gotta do is get is start pushing the car and getting the, and getting it in motion to get that jump start off mm-hmm. and get it going. But 
if if you don't see it, if you don't have the confidence to do it, you got to keep pushing. It's always going to be valleys and and hills and valleys and hills and valleys and hills. That's what business is. Absolutely, <laughs> business hell life. And you know what's so important about believing in yourself, brother, is that. When you believe in yourself, and even when you got people that's on your side, your family, close friends, they believe in you. When you start having them setbacks and failures, they kind of take a step back like, damn, man, look, you know, we was really behind you, but this shit ain't really working. Right. That's when you have to be so supremely believing in yourself because, again, their confidence and their support may kind of wane in everything. And you have to just be able to withstand all that if it does, it doesn't happen. So that's why it's super important for you to believe in yourself. I mean, you... you what what uh who was that uh, jeff bezos rich man in the world mm-hmm. when he was selling them books out of his garage he was like this he, you know what i'm saying he had a dream 150 billion dollars later that's he worth he living the dream you know his wife just got half of it but <laughs> who, he'll get it back you know how to get it exactly but who would have thought it exactly who would have thought it you know Apple, all these places that started in garages people with an idea and confidence enough to get it started and get it going uh-huh you know what i'm saying Man. just that's one thing. Believe in yourself. Now, the fourth thing I want to tell people, and this is super important, it's super important, when the last thing I'm going to have with that is stay ready. You know, I remember a song, uh, I know you know the, the rapper Sugar Free from L.A., he always said, in order for you to uh, uh, be ready, you got to stay ready. Exactly. And one of the worst things you want to have happen is, and this opportunity to get missed, is that when the opportunity comes, your ass ain't ready. <laughs> you know, you've been politicking all this time. I want my turn. I want my turn. The time come. Oh, well, give me like a month or two. Fuck that. No. When it comes, you need to be ready. When it rains, you better have that umbrella. Exactly. Huh? Exactly. And that's what happens so many times. People, they, they get the opportunities and stuff. I, 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 I did a lot with my business clients where I tell them, look, you need to get access to capital before the deal comes. Right. So when it gets the opportunity for expansion or the deal comes, you can go to the banker. Hey, this is what's going on. Hey, I need, let me go. On, I have this credit lines. So I can do it. Right. You don't wait till. The opportunity comes, man, I'm trying to get a loan to get these trucks and all that stuff. It ain't going to happen. You missed right, it. Right. You have to always stay ready. Mm-hmm. Be prepared. Be prepared. You know, that's why, you know, in the military, you know, we do so many, uh, uh, so much training, so much planning. So if something does happen, you will respond to it. That's why you see them with the public service, with the firefighters, the police. They're always doing these different kind of rehearsals. Like I say, again, something happened, they drop a bomb, they're ready for it. They're ready for these fires. They're ready for uh the standoffs and all that kind of stuff you have to stay ready Mm -hmm. so in life when those opportunities come you have to be ready so the only way you're going to be ready you got to stay ready Mm -hmm. so that's that that's those are four things i just gave you in void in in order to avoid missing your turn and you know missing out on certain opportunities number one open your damn mouth speak speak up for yourself okay poke your chest out that's go for men especially you ladies too open your mouth because again (laughs) you don't you know people they little passion. You're right. They little passion. That's on your ass if you ain't gonna say damn. Well, they don't want to give me a chance. Damn that shit. Take your chance. Exactly. If they don't want to deal with you, go make a chance somewhere else. Second thing, take ownership. You know, if that's your opportunity, you better you claim it. And like I said, don't claim it with your words. Claim it with your actions. The third thing, believe in yourself, and no one else believes in you. And like I said again, your your confidence, your energy that you are doing the right thing, you're gonna make it happen. Is gonna push off on everybody. Shit, they they ain't gotta do nothing but follow you then, okay? Right. And then the last thing, uh, the fourth thing we just gave, well, lastly, stay ready. You know, like I said, you know, uh, in order for you to be ready, you just gotta stay ready. You have to be putting yourself in a position constantly for when opportunities come your way, you're ready to receive when it comes. So, I hope that information help you. Um, people, it's it's solely your responsibility mm-hmm. in life to make sure you're putting yourself in a position. To get those opportunities, so people ain't necessarily always going to be able to uh, uh, see your vision, help you get there. Uh, don't let age or circumstances be a deterrent. Why I'm too old or this, that, and that. You can work at a job. You you, you know you sit here and say, well, look, I'm I'm forty, fifty some years old. I don't want to go back to school to get that. But you know you're gonna be at a job another ten years. So why the f you gonna still stay there another ten years? And you know you could have just spent a year or two getting some certification. Or getting, getting qualified for something that could put you in another stratosphere, you're going to be there. So don't let age or circumstances be a deterrent. Go on and do it. Mm-hmm. Make your opportunities. Don't miss your turn. You don't want to be that person. You, you know, when you see a person that's, uh, you've had a conversation with somebody that's older, man, and they get to talking about they wish they had it and all that shit. You see that damn pain in their eyes? Yeah. yeah. And, and a lot of times when we're younger, 
we we take that for granted like shit i ain't gonna be me that ain't gonna be me and next thing you know you fast forward you 60 70 years old and that's your ass yeah you have to make that shit happen i always say you gotta try it if it don't work then try mm-hmm. something else you know I that, mean, you gotta try it try something else if it don't work it's just every a lot of times people try stuff and it don't work 85 percent of the time mm-hmm. but they keep trying and then eventually something catches on you can't just give up on it you got to figure out how to improve it and make it better t- in order to you know what i'm saying in order to get it to where you want it to be absolutely everything takes work even working for somebody else takes work mm-hmm. working for work takes work absolutely working for yourself takes work it's just a matter of how much effort you're gonna put into what you trying to do versus on what somebody else has got you doing mm-hmm. and that's that's the difference no you, you you damn right about that you damn right about that and that's the thing people you have to be willing to like like i just said work make that commitment to you getting better if you ain't gonna do it, it's not gonna happen and i want to end this with that as far as talking about the opportunities people you got to realize one important thing time and the world gonna go on with or without you making that damn move so at the end of the day you know <laughs> shit gonna go yeah, exactly. you know you 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 know uh uh you get fired from a job, you walk out of the job, shit, everything's still going. The second hand's still ticking. Everything's still going on. So if you make that move, you take that opportunity, you take that chance, take that risk, open your mouth or not, the world's still going to go on if you do it or don't do it. Right. So don't, why don't you do it with you taking those opportunities? Mm-hmm. Don't let shit pass you by. Because regardless, shit going to go on. Re- shit going to go regardless what without you, you do what, what you doing it or not doing so seize the moment everybody so again i i, I really hope you uh took in a lot of information we said because i think this is something that uh is real near and dear to me because i'm i'm real funny about people complaining i'm real funny about people giving excuses so again when we do that self-reflecting looking at ourselves it's painful mm-hmm. so uh i really want everybody to kind of think about that uh, in terms about you know missing those opportunities missing those terms uh um in life again this is change of life hosted by yours truly deontay burden make sure you go to the youtube channel subscribe to it um also the owner of majestic business services um uh, two more weeks left in tax season please give us a call excuse my number is 678-479-4007 again that's 678-479-4007 or you can reach us on the web at www.majesticbiz.com uh, as always, I always have the link. You know, you can go to the website and hit the uh, appointment links. Like I said earlier in the show, and bring it up again. Uh, a lot of people have been bringing up in terms of how their refunds have been smaller or they're on this year. I'm letting everybody know, book an appointment with us. We, uh, we're offering to do the withholding analysis to let you know, hey, are you doing the optimal amount as far as what's getting taken out of your check? So you don't incur a situation next year where well you may be going something negatively now you don't have to go through it again where you may be on taxes and now if you know you're paying the the exact amount this year so you don't have that kind of situation going we're willing to do that for you we can give you different kind of options in terms of what you feel comfortable because again it still comes down to what you're comfortable with taking home each week but we can do that uh analysis tell you how you might need to adjust your w-4 withholding statement so you have that optimal amount so again we're not in two uh, uh 2020 and man, I owe more and more. Trump done did this. Trump done did that. No, we're giving you the keys, giving you the keys to the car, giving you a chance to sit back at the steering wheel and drive it yourself, instead of waiting and you know and wishing you know something don't happen. Okay, so that's the um, 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 invitation we're, we're giving to everyone. So go by the website www.majesticbiz.com. Scroll down to the scheduling link. Hit on the consultation appointment. We're doing those for those uh, thirty minute, fifty dollar. Uh, 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 consultation fees listen that fifty dollars can save you two or three thousand dollars you need to take it right now uh again you know if you, you know it may say well hey why i gotta pay this why i gotta pay that again you know once you get that um, um two or three thousand dollar invoice from the irs next year uh, i think that's your answer right there exactly. so um we're gonna spin that off where i want to get my tip for this week mm-hmm. um i've talked about this but i want to kind of rehash it again uh, in terms of credit report as a state of georgia resident even though i know we have some uh uh, um, uh, viewers from uh, different places around the country also but you know you're uh, allowed to get two free credit reports a year um, you don't have to go to a free credit report.com or credit karma go to annualcreditreport.com again it's annualcreditreport.com 
you're able to get two free copies of your credit report you know um two free copies and i always say make it a common practice to either do it at the beginning of the year or the middle of the year or the middle of the year end of the year or the mid uh the beginning of the year to end either way but you got two of them why that's so important to doing it that you always want to make sure you know what's on your credit report and they're giving you opportunity to get your credit and credit reports from all three major uh, uh reporting agencies equifax transunion and experian you get that free twice a year print it out look on it make sure everything matches and everything so when you try to make that car purchase a house purchase you're not getting surprised i don't know who did that i don't remember that man that was back from 85 i don't know i don't remember that this that and that you're, put, you're, you're empowering yourself you have the power you know what's going on you know what's on your credit report you can't go with that bs i don't know what's going on check your shit right you know that's just it you know it's kind of like we were talking about making sure you're going to the doctor again you check up twice a year and check your credit Okay, cause that can get you just damn sick <laughs> if you ain't staying on top of it. So make that a common practice twice a year, and it's free. It's free, everybody. It is free. Again, that's not necessarily giving you credit score. You may have to pay like another fee to get a credit score, but you'll at least know what's on paper associated with your name and social security number that's uh, f- uh, free out there. So, again, go to annualcreditreport.com. Not free with credit report, not credit karma, not credit this that and that but annualcreditreport.com is free where you can print out twice a year get your credit report from all three reporting agencies so please make that a common practice to do that so that's my tip for this week and in uh, conclusion with this week's show uh kind of going back to something we, we were hashing on in terms of you know missing your your turn and missing opportunities believing in yourself mm-hmm. and uh a lot of time people sit here and say it but go back to when we talk about how words uh are more prevalent than actions that's true and everything so we want to make sure that you know in life you're going to get a lot of curveballs on your um you know thrown at you mm-hmm. and you know we spoke on this a little earlier too that even with your support team your family your friends that care a lot about you and love you when you have that they, they can be behind you but when you have no setbacks in life they ain't they ain't you mm-hmm. they ain't built like you so again when you know you hit strike one it'll be okay Strike two, you know, oh, they get nervous on the sideline. Strike three, and you're out. Man, damn, and they gone, and you're like, shit, no, nah, I got another ad bat. You know, that was just, that was just it. I got, a, I got another ad bat. Just got to wait till the next inning. Everybody don't see that, mm-hmm. and you, they, uh, again, they're not obligated to see that. Uh, it's not meant for them to see that, and most time they ain't built to see that. So you got to believe in yourself and nobody else sees that. And so, th- and that's very important because we want so much out of life and we always want to, you know, speak in terms of what we feel like we should be getting from life and opportunities. But the difference between the person that got it and the person that don't got it, a lot of times simply is shit, you know, they did it. That's it. And, and again, we can go back into, well, they know this person, they got these and they got this and that going on. Yeah, they do. They do. But I always remember your path to success and my path are two different paths. I might got to hook up and I know everybody. You don't know no damn body. It might take you longer, you know. But then when you hit it, you may hit it three or four times bigger than I did. You know? That's true. Well, one of our biggest supporters for Misfits Media Group who supports all of our shows, my name show said that one of the best things, he's an independent artist, okay. one of the best things Rick Ross said was, no matter how it goes down, life goes on. That's it. <laughs> That's it. That's it. No matter how it goes now, life goes on. Yeah. And you got to know that. You, yeah. you, you don't, uh, what we talked about in terms of how, you know, people that some, you know, um, that um, uh, how people react to failure, you know, successful people. Mm-hmm. Everybody feels failure the same. It hurts the same. Right. But people that are successful, you know, it may only stay on them for a day or so. Mm-hmm. Some people devastate. They can't get out of bed. Oh, shit, I quit. It's over. It's over. It's right. over. Right. But the people that are successful, like, shit, it hurt. But after a while, hey, let's go and move to the next thing. What could I do to fix it to make it better next time? Exactly. And that's the thing about it, you know. You just said, second secondhand still ticking. Mm-hmm. The world's going to go on if you move or don't damn move. Mm-hmm. So it's best your ass damn move, move and everything. <laughs> I'd rather live thinking that way than shit never taking that opportunity. Right. You got so many people that get these, you know, uh, just negative man i had some of this you know just some of the stuff said to me well, why you do this why you do that and everything shit it don't work it didn't work and you ain't got to sit there and stick your neck out where you like okay 
Well, you might be in a damn shelter or anything like that, but you got to take some kind of risk. Some you got to do risk. something in order to get reward, right? Exactly, because if you're doing the same shit, you're gonna get the same thing. Same thing we were talking about even with uh, uh last week's show. I was talking about that uh, diversifying your network, uh-huh. just knowing that if you got the same people, you know, dealing with the same people, not necessarily going out your comfort zone, dealing with different people. The people that you know pretty much what know the same shit you know exactly and everything like i say i don't think it may be different if some people have a little bit more life experiences than you and everything but pretty much if y'all doing the same shit y'all know the same people know the same things if you're doing the same things the same actions in life you're gonna get the same results right so you're gonna have to mix it up you're gonna have to sit out here and do like this and just jump in the pool <laughs> <laughs> you know water might be warm water might be, be cold, cold. <laughs> you don't know jump your ass in there and everything so <laughs> i just really want that to stick with everybody please you know take those opportunities in life believe in yourself and everything uh don't miss your turn mm. don't miss your turn please don't miss your turn so um far too often that's happened with everybody with missing those opportunities missing them turns and they don't want to have that accountability for things that they could have done differently, differently. In, in, in in life because that hurt it does that hurt and i see everybody all the time say the same kind of stuff well we can't do this and all that kind of stuff. Look, man, it's folks come over here, don't know any Shh, damn English. They don't know English at yeah. all. Let's take out consideration. Yeah, they get, they might get a grand. They get somebody to help them. Okay, whatever. They do that. But if for some damn reason they leave them where they at and they come here and without any kind of uh, false steps or anything, they moving toward making money. And a lot mm-hmm. of time here they be around making money off damn black folks. Exactly. So doing some doing this, they thought of the same idea we we could think of we probably thought of every day exactly but they just implemented a plan to get it done absolutely and and, and going to a back you know, restating it again your path to great the greatness of the next person may be different and yours may be a little bit more difficult but it is what it is mm-hmm. so again you know don't give up on yourself believe in yourself i love you guys it's a great show again this is deontay burton our show is uh changing lives make sure you go to the youtube channel changing lives hosted by yours truly deontay burton share to the station also, uh, go to my website, Majestic Business Services. That's www.majesticbiz.com, 678-479-4007. Um, um, please hit us up if you got any uh, financial questions, anything like that. And, again, those webinars, of course, will be available to everyone next month. But in the meantime, I think we have, well, shit, I might have got almost 50 videos on the channel. Yeah. Man, you boy, you ain't got nothing to do. Dude. You really need to get enlightened. <laughs> You really want to <laughs> find some new information out, man? Go to Changing Lives That's and everything. Right. So support, support with uh, uh, support the channel. Make sure you support everybody on Misfit Media Group. I love you guys, and I look forward to talking to you guys next week. Take care of yourself now. Mm-hmm.